Hello, 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 influencers. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but we are back. So tonight, 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 um, I we are will be discussing the live topic. Celebrate your sacrifice. So first, I just want to say thank you all for tuning in with us every Wednesday night and every Saturday morning as we have been intentional about just talking on topics, speaking on topics and giving you information that gives you another perspective to view things, um, to make wiser decisions, to apply wisdom to be able to grow from the place that you are currently in to the next dimension in the next level um, as to where God is trying to take you. So on Saturday morning, I was amped up as many of you who tuned in or watched the replay could see I was very amped to give the message, it's time to graduate. And in that message, um, after listening to the message, some of you were like, yes, Shay, I identify it's time for me to graduate. It's time for me to move from the very place that I have been comfortable and I have comp become complacent in. I know that God is calling me to the next dimension, the next level, and I am ready to shift. I'm ready to move. While some of you are just like, well, wait a minute. While I am ready to graduate, um, I really don't think or I don't feel like I have the tools that I need to survive the next level. So help me in this next level. So tonight's topic, celebrate your sacrifice, comes from this um, transition, the transitional period that many of us have experienced or many of you will experience when you begin to graduate, whether it is graduate from, you know, the place that you're in um, and you have become complacent and saying, I I'm comfortable here. I understand um, the process. I understand how things are working in this position. And I just love being here and I'm really not ready to move. However, God is calling you to transition to the next phase, the next level, um, or to the ones that say, you know what? I have received the same word over and over and over again. Now I'm hearing it. And now I understand that I can't be complacent. I can't be comfortable. I got to move. I got to shift. Even when it's uncomfortable, even when I feel like I'm not ready, even when the people surrounding me say, girl, you got it. Or, um, or son, listen, the next level, the next dimension has a greater need of you than where you currently are. So tonight, 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 when I say celebrate your sacrifice, celebrate your sacrifice. So let me explain where this comes from. So I was like, you know, I really want to be more intentional about my studies. I want to get a clearer picture. I want to get a, a deeper understanding of, you know, the word of God. I want to be able to relate and understand um, without having to feel like, well, wait a minute, let me read this again and again and again. So whenever I look up scripture, I read different translations of the scripture to get a versatile um, perspective or understanding. So when I read the King James Version, I may understand, but the NIV breaks it down a little more and the message speaks plain as clear, um, plain and clear as day, as if I'm talking to somebody else. So I ordered this message Bible and I just love it. Um, so I was reading yesterday and one of the things um, that I read in this, um, the story of Isaac, Isaac was the son of Abraham. And it says here in Genesis 26, no, 25 and 21, Isaac prayed hard to God for his wife because she was barren. She couldn't have any kids. And I don't know if you remember a few weeks ago, I said, whose baby are you carrying? Whose baby are you carrying? Well, anyway, back to this. It says, Isaac prayed hard to God for his wife because she was barren. She could not have kids. God answered his, pr his prayer and Rebecca came pr became pregnant. But the children that she was carrying tumbled and kicked inside of her so much. She said, if this is the way it's going to be, why go on living? So she went to God to find out what was going on. And God told her, 
There are two nations in your womb, two people butting heads while still in your body. One people will over, overpower the other and the older will serve the younger. Then it says, when it was her time to give birth, sure enough, there were twins in her womb. And these twins were Esau and Jacob. And I'm just going to stop right there. It's a very interesting story. But the reason why I want to stop there is because here we have what um, many, when, when I look at the perception and I think about the messages and the topics that we've been talking about um, throughout the weeks, I think about here, Isaac is praying to God. At 40 years old, he's praying, God, you know, I really want to have kids. My wife, she cannot get pregnant. She cannot have kids. Lord, bless her womb. So in that period, in that season, I um, he's praying that God, to praying to God to bless his wife's womb, right? Here, Isaac is praying, praying to God to bless his wife's womb. Like, God, we want kids. Help us to be able to have kids. So God decides, uh, you know what, Isaac? I'm, I, I, you prayed, you've been in this place. I purpose you to be in this place. You prayed, you've, you've offered up, you know, your offerings to me, your prayers unto me. And now I want you, I'm going to help you to graduate. So I'm going to grant you your heart's desires. I'm going to answer your prayers. So he gives Rebecca, he go ahead and bless Rebecca's womb. And he says to Rebecca, not only Am I going to allow you to get pregnant? But I'm going to allow you to get pregnant with twins. And in the process of getting pregnant with twins, y'all have to excuse me because my husband was bringing the shirt in and one of the shirts that were made for me, and I just want to share with you all, it says Shea Speaks, you see the stars. And on the back, Shea Speaks to make you wow inspired. And this is our logo, but it's in different colors. It's amazing. So yes, our shirts, be on the lookout for the shirts that will be on sale for your purchase. The Wild Inspire t-shirts are coming. So Isaac prayed unto God and said, God, you know, I, we want kids. We want kids. Give us our desires of our hearts. So Isaac, he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed. And I can only imagine, you know, he's 40 years old and his wife is not able to bear kids. She's not able to give birth and have children. So God says to Isaac, he says, you know what? You've been praying for this thing a long time. I purposed you to be in this position because I wanted you to depend on me. I wanted to show you my hand. I wanted my hand to move in your life like never before. I want not only you, but the people that's watching your life, your family's life, to know that it was nobody that did this but me. So God begins to, I can only imagine, he, he begins to give Isaac his prayers. He's like, you know what? You prayed a long time. And, you know, I'm going to give you, I'm going to grant you your prayers. I'm going to allow you to graduate from praying from, for these things. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to bless your wife's womb. I'm going to impregnate her. And that's what God did. Thank you, sis. God was able, um, through Isaac's prayer, God moved on his behalf. His wife got pregnant. Now, okay, she's pregnant now. So they went all these years, could not have kids. So God answers his prayers. She gets pregnant and she says to God, let me read it again. She says to God, wait a minute, God. She says, Rebecca became pregnant, but the children tumbled and kicked inside of her so much that she said, if it's going to be this way, why go on living? Miranda, thank you for tuning in. If it's going to be this way, why go on living? God. My husband has prayed. He's positioned you for us to have children. Now I've gotten pregnant. I, we've graduated from that prayer. And you granted me what I've asked you for. But now that I'm pregnant, I'm feeling like this is too much. If all of this pain from me carrying this baby at the time, this baby, if it's going to be like this, why? Why, why should I go on living? Why? And, and he answers back to her because she takes this to God. Like, God, I need to understand what's happening here. And he says to her that he told, he replied to her and said, 
you are pregnant. He's saying that the two nations, there's two nations in your womb. You're not just pregnant. You're carrying, you are carrying nations. Nations that's going to do something great in the earth realm. And I can only imagine that she had to celebrate her sacrifice. So she's carrying these babies and they are really giving her, you know, they, they, they taking her through some stuff while she's carrying them. And she, she went to God and like, God, if it's going to be all of this, well, maybe I, I, I shouldn't never, I wasn't created to have kids. And he said, oh no, listen, your husband's prayed. He has prayed. He's been before me so much that I am saying that, you know what? He was faithful in his prayer. He didn't stop praying. Even when you wasn't getting pregnant, Rebecca, Isaac never stopped praying. So I'm going to give you all what he's been praying for. So she done got pray she done got pregnant and she's experiencing all this pain and all of this all this hard hardship her body is now going through a lot of transformations and she's trying to figure out like you know wait a minute did I really sign up for this? But what she took and went to God and God released gave her an answer to her prayers like God if it was going to be like this why why this is is this really worth all of this and God said yes it's worth all of this because you're carrying two nations in your womb two nations in your womb and in that moment I can only imagine Rebecca saying oh my goodness like here I go complaining at first I couldn't have kids my husband tarried and he prayed and he asked God we went through some struggle we went through some strain and now here I am complaining while carrying these kids and and she goes to God and God says not only are you pregnant but you're carrying two nations so I can only imagine that she began to celebrate her sacrifice so just thinking about sacrificing looking up the definition of sacrifice the definition the google definition defines it as the verb it had many different definitions but the verb of, of sacrifice is the act of giving up something valued for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy so here rebecca is pregnant and she's questioning god like all of this kicking, all of this movement inside of me, Lord, what is going on? Is it really worth all of what I'm sacrificing now? And God replies back to her and say, listen, not only did I allow you to be impregnated, but I have two nations that's growing on the inside of you. And then what begins to happen is when she goes to give birth, the scriptures, good, hello, 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 Miss Sharon. When she goes to give birth, what happens is she is able to see the manifestation of what she prayed to God for God. If it's going to be like this, do I have to really go through this? When God gave back to her and said, you're not only pregnant, but you're carrying in two nations. She then had to wise up and say, wait a minute. Here I am after I could not have kids and my husband prayed and prayed and prayed. God graduated our prayers from praying. God impregnate my wife. God allow her womb to to become subject to what I'm giving her so that she could bring forth life. After God allowed those prayers, after God allowed Isaac to be, after he helped him graduate from praying for the same thing over and over and over again, here goes Rebecca in a, in a place where she's now pregnant. God has given her her heart's desire, where their heart's desire, and she's questioning him like, wait a minute, all of this pain, all of what I'm feeling, is it really worth me really going through this and God had to answer her back and say, wait, not only were you able, not able to have children once upon a time, but because of the consistency of your husband and all of the things that you all had went through to, and yet still held on to the promise yet still may remain faithful in your walk. I have chosen not only to allow you to become pregnant, but I have impregnated you with two nations. So it says that when she went to go give birth, indeed, she was pregnant and it was twins. She gave birth to two, two, two nations. Those nations was named Esau and Jacob. God told her while she was carrying them, one people will overpower the other 
and the older will serve the younger. So I can only imagine after God released that word to Rebecca, even though she felt like, oh my goodness, this is a lot of pain. I did not know what we were praying for. I didn't know what I was asking for when I asked you to bless my wounds or allow me to get pregnant. But Lord, since you allow me to get pregnant and you not only impregnated me with one baby, but you end up giving me double for the time that I had to wait. You end up giving me double for all of the hardship and the pray, the, uh, the how I had to pray because I couldn't just pray the regular way. You called me to pray in a different way in order to help me to graduate from praying for this thing. I had to get in a place where you had to demand my attention in a way that I could no longer be concerned about what was surrounding me because I need this from you, God. So I am here to encourage you tonight and inspire you that after you graduate, even when you don't feel like you have the tools you need to sustain in the next level, you will suffer or you will go through some things where you have to make some sacrifices. But tonight, I am here to encourage you to celebrate even your sacrifices because once you don't even know what's coming behind your sacrifice. You, Rebecca didn't know that she was, she couldn't have kids and God it, it allowed her to become pregnant. She didn't know that she was pregnant with, with two nations. She didn't know that the, 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 the pain that she was feeling in that moment while carrying those babies was twins. She, this woman went from a place where she could not have kids to not only being pregnant the first time of being, ever being pregnant, but being pregnant with twins. So I say to you tonight, just celebrate those sacrifices because really, really, to be honest, your sacrifices is the very things that builds that, that builds that, that foundation to give you the greater, uh, the greater blessing that God has in store for you. So tonight be intentional to celebrate your sacrifices. Be reminded of um, Isaac and Rebecca, be reminded of them the next time that you think about, you know, God, here I am. I'm giving all that I know how to give to you. I'm giving you my time. I'm giving you my attention. I'm giving you all that I have to give. When I have nothing left to give, God, I'm still pouring out to you. God, I'm still offering up my praise. I'm still offering up a sacrifice. I'm still giving it to you. So tonight, be intentional. Understand that the, the, the act of intent, being intentional just come from a place of, I'm doing this on purpose. Like, yeah, I see that what I'm going through in the battle that I'm in is much greater than what it appears to be. I understand that it looks like I'm losing. I understand that it looks like I don't have the tools to overcome the battle that I'm in. I'm, I understand that it looks like to the man outside looking in that I'm not equipped to be in this next level or this next dimension. But I have decided that I'm going to graduate from getting the same words. I have decided that I'm going to graduate from the mindset that keeps me in a place of being stuck that keeps me in a stagnant place. I have been intentional about deciding that I'm going to graduate. So when I graduate, I know that I'm going to face some type of opposition. I'm going to battle. I'm going to experience another level of war warfare. And because of that, I also know that in this story of Isaac and Rebecca, they couldn't have kids at first. And he, they said, the Bible says he was 40 years old. He was praying unto God, God, allow my wife, allow my wife, impregnate my wife, give, help us to do this. So God not only helped them and helped them and help, God not only blessed her womb, but he blessed her womb double the time. And even as they graduate, I mean, we're talking about a woman that couldn't have kids. <laughs> We're talking about a woman that could not have kids, y'all. So I believe the impossible. You know why? Because I'm, I'm crazy enough to believe his word.
I'm crazy enough to believe his words. It says miracle signs and wonders shall follow this word. And the reality is, is many may not understand some of the things that, you know, I've discussed on these lives. But again, while inspired is all about helping you to get a different perspective, giving you some form of wisdom to be able to say, you know what? Wait a minute, I looked at this thing from this angle and maybe that wasn't the angle in which I was supposed to see it from. Maybe I needed to see it from this angle to understand that I have a little bit more than what I felt like I had to graduate. I had a little bit more to understand that even though I'm standing in this place and while many may say I don't deserve to be in this place, I'm unworthy to stand in this place. While many, many may say, oh, well, remember when? I thank God because he chose me to be in this place. And because he chose me to be in this place, every sacrifice that I have to make, I'm still going to celebrate those moments of sacrificing. I'm going to celebrate and I'm going to work. Listen, work. I talk about the work it series, right? Work your weight, work your win and work that sacrifice. Little becomes much when you put it in the master's hand. This is like, you know, bills that need to be paid. We as women, when we are given something, we know how to multiply it. We know how to make more out of little when we have it. We know how to take and cook up a meal and scratch it for our whole family. We know how to take two slices of bread and make two sandwiches. No, I'm sorry, make four sandwiches with two slices of bread. If you don't know inbox me. I'll tell you what you do. But as women, we just have this creative mind. Even as men, you take what little bit you are given. You take a, you take a, a, a Philip head screwdriver and unscrew a flat head uh, nail because you just have that creative mindset to be able to do these things, right? So I say that to say that even in your season of sacrificing, don't forget to celebrate the sacrifice because it's the sacrifice that you're going to use to be able to tell somebody else, listen, I sacrificed the little bit that I had. I sacrificed when God allowed me to get pregnant with this child. Rebecca had to sacrifice. Her body wasn't the same. Women, I know y'all can attest to when you get pregnant, your emotions change. Your, 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 your body begins to go through changes. Your cravings change. Your desires change. But all of those things are sacrificed because they're sacrifices so that when you have um, the opportunity to give birth to that baby, you look at that baby and you say, you know what? Listen, all of the sacrifices that I had to go through for you, I thank God that I was able to go through these things, that I was able to make these sacrifices because nothing can compare to being able to see something as great as life being created in your womb. So celebrate those sacrifices. It's those sacrifices that keeps us in a state of humbleness. Uh, Y'all not trying to hear it. It's the sacrifices that keeps me humble. It's the sacrifice that keeps you humble. If you ever get to a place in life where you feel like, mm, I've made it, oh, I, and you forget where you come from, trust and do believe a season of sacrifice is right around the corner to remind you of, listen, you didn't always have it this good. You didn't just wake up with the knowledge. You didn't just wake up and get into this place where, oh, God has blessed you and you, for you to forget. So you'll go through a season of sacrificing but I am here to inspire you and encourage you. Celebrate even the sacrifices because something great happens when you are able to celebrate your sacrifices. Do you not know that the testing and the trying of your faith work with patience? And when you're able to celebrate your sacrifices, that is when God himself is starting to customize a greater blessing for you. But when you start saying, you know what, why, why I had to go through this, why I got to get morning sickness or why I got to get up or why I got to give my last to my neighbor. When you start to, 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 to have that mindset and that attitude, you can't embrace the next level. So just be intentional tonight about celebrating your sacrifices. 
Can't ever forget where God has brought us from. You're absolutely right. We can't forget. Let me go back up. There were some other comments. Um, God always have a plan for each and every one of us, no matter our challenges or circumstances. He is a way maker and he gives us the desires of our heart. Absolutely with God, all things are possible, but with God, all things are possible. Yes, yes, yes. So because of that, when we quote these scriptures, we have to literally be able to walk them out. And I will tell you that I will tell you firsthand that those tests come so strong that you will be like, wait a minute, you was not expecting to be hit in certain areas or be tested in certain areas. But again, the testing and the trying of your faith work of patience, work of much patience. So again, celebrate your sacrifices. When God allows you to graduate from one place of your life to the next, know that you will be tested. Know that you will be tried. Know that those tests are awaiting you. So even in a moment in time where you find yourself, listen, I don't have all that I need, but I thank God that I don't, that I don't lack anything. So I may be sacrificing right now where, you know what? My washer or my dryer went up and I got to go to the laundromat. But in that period of sacrifice, God is simply reminding us, we cannot forget where we come from. We are living in a world where we are so privileged. I just was having this conversation today. We are so privileged. The generation is so privileged that they no longer want to walk anywhere because we are so privileged. So sometimes we have to go through a season of sacrificing to remind us to not forget where we come from, to remind us that someone else still has need of our helping hand, just to remind us that, listen, I don't care how far in life you get you still will have to have a sacrifice. But it's not the ability, it's not having the sacrifice, but it's how we handle ourselves through those sacrifices, through the moments that we have to give up something in order to really lean and depend on God for something else. You can't have a testimony if you never go through a test. Absolutely right. You have to be tested in order to have a testimony because the word of the Lord declares that it's through the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony that we are overcome. So in order for us to be able to tell somebody else something, we have to go through. We have to be willing to sacrifice. So tonight, just celebrate your sacrifices. Rebecca could not have any kids. Her husband is said that he prayed at the age of 40 God, I know my wife cannot bear any kids, but Lord, bless her womb. So when God blessed Rebecca's womb, he did not only bless her womb, but he gave her the opportunity not only to give life, but to birth nations, the Bible says. He impregnated her with nations. He impregnated her not with one, but with two. So just know that sometimes when you get to a place and you're intentional about graduating, when you are intentional about walking in the next level, when you are intentional about taking on the things of God and really being uh, and really doing what he's purposed and called you to do, you're bound to go. You're bound for the test. You're bound for the, the next level of warfare. You're, you're, it's bound to happen to you. It's bound to happen. But tonight, 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 celebrate your sacrifices. Listen, guys, I am Shay here to inspire the influencer and you again, while inspired is not, it's not, it is not my brand. It is a movement and this is a shared platform. So please feel free to reach out to me with topics. Um, we are going to be moving into our priorities and peace segment. Um, and just to give you some background about that, um, I was talking to a friend one day and literally um, God had dropped in my spirit that we have to be sure that the very things that we consider our priority is his priority. And something that is a priority is the fact or condition of something being regarded or treated as more important. 
or a thing that is regarded as more important than to another. So just understanding that our priorities should be the priorities of God. And the peace that I'm referring to is defined as freedom from disturbance. It does not mean that things are not going to happen. It means that you're in, you have tranquility in your life, a state or period in which there is no war or a war has ended its peace. What God did back then, he can still do the same now in this day and time. Yes, ma'am, he still can. He is the same God back then, even today. Yes, celebrate our sacrifices with them. We would not find value or purpose within ourselves. Yes, ma'am. Precious, thank you for tuning in. So yes, tonight we are celebrating our sacrifices. Miss Thompson, thank you for tuning in with us tonight. We are celebrating our sacrifices. We are saying that, listen, I know it's through these sacrifices. These sacrifices are the very things that keep me humble. And I need to remain humble no matter how far in life I get, no matter where I go in life. Lord, let me not forget. Keep me humble. So celebrate your sacrifices. Don't be ashamed to talk about your sacrifices. Like, listen, child, the first of the month just hit. And listen, we ain't doing too much for the next two weeks. We sacrificing. We have to sacrifice or we'll be in greater debt. So yeah, we sacrifice and I ain't ashamed to talk about it. Don't be ashamed to talk about your sacrifice. Celebrate. In fact, celebrate your sacrifices. Talk to somebody else. Tell them, listen, I'm not ashamed of, of what I had to sacrifice. I'm not ashamed that I had to, my body had to go through what it had to go through. Because listen, all four of my kids are a blessing. Even my son that I lost some years ago. I am not ashamed of what I had to sacrifice. I'm not ashamed of the season. I'm not ashamed now of the season of depression that I walked in after I lost my first son. I'm not ashamed of, I'm not ashamed or afraid to talk about, I became a functioning alcoholic at the age of 19. And I say functioning because I was still working every day. I wasn't even legal, legal age to be drinking anything. So how can I be an alcoholic? Well, honey, listen, I was getting it. And to people in the natural, they never see me as an alcoholic because they didn't see me Monday through Thursday. They just see me Friday and Saturday. But they didn't know that I needed to drink in order to sleep at night. They didn't know I needed to drink in order to cope with my own emotions. We're talking about sacrifices. I'm not celebrating the act of me becoming an alcoholic at the age of 19, but I celebrate the sacrifice that I had to go through in order for me to get to this place, to be able to find the strength, to celebrate what I had to sacrifice. The, the sacrifice wasn't me drinking or me becoming an alcoholic at the age of 19. The sacrifice in, was in me losing my son. And at that time, I did not understand. Talk about a sacrifice. Sacrifice what? Wait a minute. Wait. So I'm about to be a mom for the first time and you want me to what? No, I don't understand it. So again, even with celebrating your sacrifices, understand you're going to walk through a season in your life where you're not able to process emotions. But that's when you need to really pull or gravitate to some strong people that can help get you through, help pray you through. Let's not talk about it so much. Sometimes some people just need a listening ear. I'm not here to judge you. Sometimes you just need a listening ear, but you really need prayer to be able to tap into those emotions, to be able to say, it's okay for me to feel how I feel, but it's not okay for me to drown in these emotions. So, yeah, I mean, that's another topic. That's another lie. But sacrifice. Celebrate your sacrifices. Don't be afraid to talk about your sacrifices because it's those sacrifices that are becoming. Those are just the things that, that become your foundation who, that makes you who you are. So just celebrate your sacrifices, guys. I love you all to life. Listen, super excited because... June the 21st, 
I will be the future speaker at the Ladies Fiesta. The topic and the theme for that night is passion, purpose, power. What is it? How, how do I know I possess it? How do I use it? Get your ticket. Come out to hear about your passion, purpose, power. June the 29th, the book will be released. Woo, 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 woo. So I'm super, super excited. The visionary of that book project let us know today that the chapter, she let us see the layout of the chapters. She let us see some of, you know, get some, get a little glimpse of how the book will be composed. And I'm super, super excited about that. Thank you all to the ones that's already purchased the book. Thank you to the ones that have told me I want a copy of the book. So I appreciate all of your support. And as you've seen earlier, Wow Inspired t-shirts are coming. So listen, if you want to be on this platform, um, please reach out to me. If you have a topic that you feel like we need to talk about, give me that topic. We're going to talk about it. Um, just reach out to me, y'all. We're here for one another. We are celebrating our wins. We are working it together, working the weight, working the win, working the sacrifice. We are working it together. So I am just here to inspire the influencer in you. I love you all to life. Listen, tonight we had some technical difficulties, but the devil, he is a liar. The message was put out there. And again, listen, if you have a difficult time with your reading, I encourage you to get the message version of the Bible. This thing is so clean. This thing is so plain and clear. I was reading this today in, um, in um, Bible study, and I just love how it reads. Here is one, live well, live wisely. Here it is in James 3, uh, 3, 13. Do you want to be counted wise to build up the reputation for wisdom? Here's what you do. Live well, live wisely, live humbly. Sacrifice makes you humble. It's the way you live. Not only is it the way you live, it says, not the way you talk that counts. Mean spirit ambition isn't wisdom. Boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourself sound wise isn't wisdom. It's the roughest, it's the farthest thing from wisdom. It's animals, cunning, devilish, cunning, whatever you're trying to look better than others to get better of others. Things fall apart and everyone ends up, ends up, at each other's throats. Listen, this is the message version. It reads so clear. I love it. So all of those things are not wisdom. Then it says real wisdom. God's wisdom begins with a holy life and is characterized by getting along with others. It is gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessings, not hot one day and cold the next, not two-faced you can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoy its results only if you do the hard work of getting along with others, treating others with dignity and honor. Wow. It goes deeper than that. Get the message version. I'm telling you, it's amazing. It reads like a book. It don't get no plainer than that. And it says here that one of the one of the wisdom is getting along with other people. It's understanding that we all have to sacrifice. It's getting along with other people because we all have to sacrifice. We all have a struggle. We all have a season where we have to graduate. So tonight, 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 be intentional about celebrating your sacrifices. This is Shay. I am Shay. I am Shay. Here to inspire the enforcer in you. Listen, y'all, I just want you all to shift with Shay Speaks. The Lord gave me shifting with Shay Speaks. So we're shifting. We're not, we're, we're just not moving. We're shifting, like literally shifting. When we shift, everything moves. When we move, we move. But when we shift, everything we're connected to has to move. So listen, when you come on in and you tune in, listen, 
It's not about me. Please, I'm begging you. I have been begging, begging, begging for some time now. Reach out to me. I want to share this platform. I want to hear your perspective. One night, we'll maybe just do a sporadic thing. But I really want you to be in a place where you're, it's quiet, where we can hear you and people that are tuning in can hear your perspective. Because I would really love to hear someone even talk about when, when I say celebrate your sacrifice, what came to mind before I said any of the other stuff that I said? Before we talked about the scripture, before we said any of this content, what really came to mind? So listen, this live may take a little longer to find YouTube because we are going to try to do some cuts and some edits. But you all know any lives that we have done on Facebook can also be found on YouTube at I am Shay Speaks, that's I-A-M-S-H-A-Y-S-P-E-A-K-S. I am Shay Speaks. So y'all subscribe and tell somebody to tell a neighbor, to tell a friend that we are live every Wednesday night and every Saturday morning. Have an amazing rest of the week and we will all see you in the live on Saturday as well as in the community. Be inspired, be encouraged, love you all to life and remember, don't forget to celebrate your sacrifices.